So, I'm working on the gimbal maze prototype, and so far I've been using these. Uh, I've been using these wood sprockets, laser cut, something I like to do. Uh, but it turns out that the torque here is just too high. We've had several chipped teeth already, and I think the problem's only going to get worse. Um, in addition, I'm having a lot of problems with the uh, chain jumping off, and of course that's what's chipping the teeth. So I want to switch to actual um, roller chain, industrial roller chain. I went with number 35 here just because um, that's what it was cheap on eBay that day. So I have the sprockets, which are going to replace these. And I also have some idler sprockets with the built-in bearing, with the built-in bearings, um, which will be used for tensioning out here and also to help move the line of the chains out um, so that we get more room in here. Um, not super critical now, but that is definitely going to be eventually a, a design feature that I need, so I want to get started on that now. Um, anyway, so the first thing to do is you need to mount the sprockets. Um, now, right now, uh, the sprockets are screwed onto a little hub that I made by welding a washer onto a nut, um, which didn't screw onto this. This is, I think, uh, Brilliant spine thread, if I remember correctly. Um, and so these are just uh, plain steel nuts you can get, so you can weld them without having to worry about uh, fume fever or something. So I want to do the same trick and just weld them directly onto these plain sprockets that I got. Um, but they have to be centered, otherwise uh, it won't turn very well. So the question is, how to space those evenly out. Now my initial thought is if I can place them on there and then put a spacer in between that's just the right width that'll hold them centered or at least centered enough for these purposes and I can screw on the nut on top, tack weld it, remove it, and then repeat. So the question is how big does that have to be? So I think these were half inch inside, but we'll check. So definitely half inch. So 0.13 inches distance, and I divide that by 2, 0 0.065. So let's see what I have in that range. So looking through some uh, scrap here, I just locked the calipers to the correct width. Um, don't even need them on for that, they're just locked in place. And these two sheets together, is that coming through? I can't tell. Anyway, pretty much just what I want. A little bit of wiggle room, but I'm going to have to bend them in a circle, so that's probably for the best. So let's see if this can work.
Now, how does that look? I think it's actually kind of promising. This is just a rough cut. I'm going to do it again with longer strips, I think. But I think that's proving pretty promising. They've also got to be narrower, of course, so they don't protrude above into the sprocket so I can clamp the nut all the way down. But um, otherwise, I think this is looking pretty promising. And here we go. Two strips of brass, short enough that they don't project above the edge of the, the sprocket there, which uh, pretty neatly centered. It's not 100% perfect, but I think it is good enough that I can proceed to uh, welding these in place. Sweet. Okay, so we've removed all of the uh, right angle drives with the uh, sprockets from the prototype here. It's now spinning free. So now we need to just uh, remove all these. Of course, these have all been Loctited in place, but uh, only with the, the uh, lower strength Loctite. Um, eventually, I will probably just end up welding them in place. Um, but of course, I want to be sure, really sure I, I like what I, I have by then. I'm glad I didn't with the uh, wood sprockets, for instance. Um, so let's get these off. Yeah, I can just break this loose with enough force. It's not, they're not on that solidly. I had um, at least one break free actually while testing it on the prototype, even with the, the janky wood sprockets. So um, it's not that strong. So just like that, another five to do. And there we have it. Wood sprockets removed. Mm, maybe I'll keep those, don't know. Uh, nuts some bolts, need to put those back in with my other uh, 440, I think those are, in that bin. And more importantly, I have the hubs off. Now these are just, like I said, a uh, nut welded onto a washer. Uh, but now I want to weld these centered onto here. And I haven't decided yet, am I going to bother cutting off the nuts um, or just weld the washers directly on? I think I'll probably cut the, the nuts off because the washers did warp a little bit more than I liked. Um, and that's going to prevent uh, these from rotating truly. And of course, I don't, the real problem is I only have two extra of these nuts, so I need to salvage at least uh, four of these to make this work. So um, yeah, I think I'll start cutting these off and then we can weld them up. Okay, so I have one of those hubs done up in the in the bench vise here, and we're going to cut it off. And this is where things get loud. Sorry. There we go. One nut freshly liberated. Just needed to do that for, um, now let's just do all, all six. I'll keep the unwelded nuts nice. Might as well. Okay, here we are. So we have the nut screwed on. 
And just to show you under there is the spacers that we made earlier, the sprocket. And then all of that is on another nut underneath so that we know it's all nice and true. Because uh, not much point if we don't do that. So now you can see that. We've got our grounding clamp on, which is a bit awkward on a piece this size, but uh, obviously it's not getting grounded with a plastic case. Um, so let's try welding it and we'll see how the video comes out. Because I've only done that a couple times before with glass. So. I think that's working. Okay, here we go. Yeah, you can just sort of barely see the edge of it. I guess that works. Here's the grounding clamp. Okay. And there it is. that. See how it looks. True there. True there. I think this is going to work pretty well. Okay, let's just do um, another five. We've got to remove the rings, the spacing rings from the previous weld. Like that. Take the one we're working on there. Ah, helmet doesn't work. Luckily, the, the rings being thin brass, they cool off really quickly. Place them on. Place the next sprocket on. Notice I finally remembered to grind those down. That was sloppy of me before. Add the next nut. Tighten it up. I think that's spinning true enough for my purposes. Okay. Ground it. My helmet on. Oops. Hit the trigger. Let's trim that off a bit. Okay. Okay, and another one done, just like that. Okay, so now we have all six welded on, bracket to nut. Now we need to put them back onto the right angle drives with some Loctite. Again, just using the blue, the lower strength version and um, Probably at this point, if that's not enough, I'll just uh, weld them onto the, the screw there. It's not worth messing around. I also uh, hit them with a wire brush to make them look a bit nicer. Not that that matters at all in a prototype, but uh, oh well. So, apply the Loctite. Since it's uh, locked in the vise, I can't rotate that without rotating the shaft, so that's the easiest way to get to all that sides. Screw this on. Snug it down nice and tight. Remember, Loctite works anaerobically. You gotta get all the oxygen out of there before it'll set. Okay, that'll be good. Nah, no, not the truest as it could be. Not entirely happy with that. Oh, look at that. 
think there's a bit of weld splatter in there preventing it from setting straight. That sucks. Maybe I'll undo this one and uh, try it again. Okay, redid that one and it's running a lot truer now. So, uh, so we're gonna go ahead with the other five. Okay, so here we have all six done. Running, you know, not quite as true as I would like, but I think true enough. Um, definitely feels more solid than the wood sprockets. So next thing will be to get them mounted back up on the, uh, the gimbling frame and getting the, the chain drive in place. Uh, but to do that, we'll probably have to get the, uh, the idler sprockets up as well, so that's not happening today. But uh, anyway, got this done at least. Not bad.